This is Anarchy Road, a level which took me 2,000 hours to make. That's almost 90 days of constant building with a crazy end result as well. So here's how I made my most ambitious level in Geometry Dash. But first, let's get some context and scale things back a bit. Instead of getting thousands of hours to build a level, what could you make with just one? Well, you might get something like this. It's not really beautiful, but I only made the most essential details here since that's all I had time for. However, that's not really impressive, so let's spend some more time on a level, say, 100 hours. With that sort of time, you might get something like this. When you get more resources like time or skills, you can invest them into your levels like I did here. But your resources are always limited and you can't do everything you want, which leads to what I call trade-offs. Trade-offs are when you sacrifice one aspect of your level for benefits elsewhere. For example, here I spend lots of time on details and making a good environment, sacrificing the parts length at the same time. You'll see lots of trade-offs later on, so keep that in mind. But as useful as they are, trade-offs aren't a solution to everything. They help set your priorities straight in the editor, but can't help with other issues like getting ideas or staying motivated. To deal with those, I need some new strategies to get ideas and make progress. Speaking of which, let's go back to Anarchy Road and see what I'm doing there. I finished the level's layout on January 12th of last year, and a month later I had my first deco progress. Once finished, this first part would be a junkyard where you have these void tendrils and liquid rising through the air, clogging it up and corrupting everything they touch. Granted, it would take me about 3 more months to finish this section, putting me at about 100 hours of work by May 1st. But while this is a pretty slow pace for a 17 second segment, I was able to double my progress in half the time, finishing the third part and starting on the second in about an extra 50 hours. This third part is a sewer system underneath the city you're exploring, which is the second part. You can see the same void in both of these regions, spilling out from the ground and completely flooding some places. I also made this transition between the first and second parts, where you hop into a cannon and shoot yourself kind of like that one cutscene in Doom Eternal. These same cannons also show up in the final part, where you exit the sewer system and traverse a different part of the city during a pretty violent storm and a battle between two forces on the planet. It took me until around August to make all of this progress, which left me with about 85% of the level finished according to my to-do list. All of this was about 600 hours of work, but that's actually kind of efficient when you consider that my Emerald Realm part took 100 hours. I managed to solve my old issues with these strategies. First, I spent lots of time planning everything in the level. And when I say everything, I mean it. You think you have a large to-do list? Try having a whole 18 pages document tracking every single asset you've made, every single group and editor layer you have, and a to-do list on top of that. Being this rigorous was super slow at the start, which is why it took so long to finish that first section. I had to make new categories for basically everything I needed to track in the level, like animations, frame detection, and a parallax system. Once I had most of the initial stuff accounted for, it was much faster to continue planning out other areas, and this document would also have really useful benefits later on. But before making my design doc, I invested lots of time into planning my ideas out. Normally, I would make a level by getting an idea for a part, building it, and then repeating that process for each section of the level. But this also comes with drawbacks, notably that once you finish one section, you have to restart the whole process of getting ideas and making blocks from scratch, which is the slowest part of making anything since starting from scratch is really difficult. Instead of doing that, I spent a good month or so making a vision for the level. A vision is basically your main idea or theme, but you get as specific as possible. So instead of just saying you're making a blue space level like every dang collab host nowadays, you actually explain what you want with some level of detail. This doesn't have to be done all at once either. I made a general vision for the whole level back in January, and as I built out each part and found inspiration images, I expanded on that vision more and more. I also started each part with a basic sketch of my ideas, which helped me organize everything before I was bogged down by details and object counts. With all the heavy lifting already done for me, I could jump right into building without constantly stopping to get ideas or inspiration. And once I actually did start working, I saved lots of time just by making assets for the level. Normally you might make a starter block for a part, then copy paste details from it to make the other blocks. This makes each block kind of unique, but also waits lots of time when each part has to be constructed from scratch. But while using assets, I traded time I would otherwise use for these blocks to instead make reusable presets that I'd use everywhere. The first reason took a long time because I spent hours referencing tons of different materials to make my assets. Although, I kinda just yoinked half of them from my Emerald Realm part. But don't blame me. Not only did I save time this way, but I also made the level feel more unified than if I just had one starter block per part. Since I could also use these assets however I wished, I could also make the individual blocks have more variation to keep them interesting. It also saved lots of time when optimizing, since I could just optimize my assets and replace everything that used them in one fell swoop. 
This process worked almost perfectly for me. Almost. Here's the thing. Planning like this doesn't help with two major aspects, one of which is just entering the editor and building. More importantly though, this process is really hard to use in the GD community, and it would become an issue for me right around this time. You see, getting feedback in Geometry Dash is kind of silly at times. In my experience, people tend to assume your work is fully finished if you're showing it, leading to them saying stuff like an unfinished part lacks details. And if you have any vision more specific than blue space level, they'll be ignoring crucial context, making the feedback less relevant or more frustrating. It's like trying to critique an argument essay by reading an out of context quote. You have to understand the essay's points for your critiques to make sense. In other words, you should first get feedback from those who understand your vision before going to a general audience. I didn't know that back in August. Instead, I thought the only thing I could do was to flesh out the level and make my vision obvious entirely through the level's details. Which helps, but not by much. I would be trading my own efficiency and well-planned priority list for reworking the level with a goal of just making it good. And the second I did that, all of my old issues instantly resurfaced. Without a clear vision or a good set of goals, I quickly lost scope of my ideas and couldn't enter the editor with enough focus to progress properly. And as if that weren't enough, I started constantly adding new things to my to-do list to try and make the level good, but without a clear goal in sight, this only slowed down my progress further. Remember how I was 85% done with my to-do list in August? Well, by the time I got to November, I was still stuck at around 87% progress. It's not that I didn't work on the level at all, but that I was adding more and more action items every day. The only reason why the progress percentage increased is because I was running out of new things to do. This is honestly where I wanted to give up. After all, I'm not a full-time GD player, I have college, a job, and a lot of personal stuff to deal with, and I cannot make trade-offs there when push comes to shove. Solving this aimless wandering took a few steps. First, I took a bunch of breaks from the level to focus on my real life tasks. If I was stuck on ideas or ways to improve, I might as well be productive elsewhere in the meantime. Taking things slower meant I was spending more real life time away from the level, but I could come back with a fresh mind and less burnout. In November, I got some really comprehensive feedback on my designs, which I used to rework three of the level's backgrounds from the ground up. I also redesigned a ton of blocks in the first and last parts using that feedback. This would have been a really slow process, but with all the assets I made and everything I accounted for previously massively sped up my progress. On that note, I also made some new assets for the last two parts, as well as a variety of new transitions and a lot of color changes. Though the level was looking better than ever, I still wasn't satisfied, so I made another major trade-off. Instead of showing the level to more general audiences, I would only show it to people who actually knew my vision and could provide relevant feedback. While this meant I had lost some potentially valuable insights, it was really good for my motivation. I felt like I could actually do things without trying to satisfy literally everyone, and my design doc became really handy here when I needed to figure out what my old triggers were doing. Trust me, when my editor looks like this, having any sort of direction is a complete godsend. Mind you, none of this was a fast or easy process. By December, I'd sunk an extra 300 hours into the level, with my progress list hovering around 90%. But at this point, I had officially ran out of new things to do. The only way I could change the level would be if the game itself fundamentally changed, like through a game update or something like that. Oh, huh. Would you look at that? 2.2 was probably the best thing that could happen for me. Even though I had traded my fundamental goal of making a pretty good 2.1 level for making a decent 2.2 level, I still got many benefits out of it. For one, it gave me some real goals to work towards. I'd made a list of features I would add when the update released, and that gave me a real goal to accomplish when I opened the editor. Instead of trying to improve my level in some nebulous way, I could enter the editor dead set on optimizing the third background or something like that. And since I entered winter break the day after 2.2 came out, I had plenty of time to get to work. Over the next month, I would implement tons of features and upgrade my level a lot. I optimized about 10,000 objects through just the warp feature, replaced a lot of my old particle effects with the new particle editor, and completely replaced my old parallax system with something that didn't require constant maintenance. I also added sound effects when the player touches blocks or portals, created some new cloud assets which I would use through every part, and started on a settings menu where you can customize the level's low detail modes, color settings, and a lore menu. Once again, my planning was super useful whenever I had to fix issues with the 2.2 triggers, and when I was replacing older things with objects from the update. It also helped that I'd developed some 2.2 guys with others in my Discord server, so I didn't have a ton of extra features to learn and could just focus on building. You should totally join if you want to learn more about making levels, by the way. 
Speaking of levels, I almost lost everything the day after 2.2 dropped because of bugs. Adding a midground to a level made it impossible to open in the editor, and I guess I added a midground when messing around once. I was lucky I made a backup beforehand, but regardless the game was way too buggy for my liking. The new preview mode hockey could freeze objects in place if you use while playtesting, so you can imagine my reaction when I saw that it broke my deco after I'd already pressed save. Most annoying of all, playing the level in-game became impossible with start positions, as the game just kicks me out entirely. Even with all of these bugs, I was still making progress. I finished my whole 2.2 checklist around mid January, which included other changes like adding new textures, making keyframe animation for some objects, and lots of color grading. I don't have an exact hour count here, but I'd say it was about 14 or 1500 hours in. You can see the level looks much better than it did before. The last 300 hours would be spent on a lot of stuff, refining the visuals, finishing off sections of the level like this throne room, some new custom art, making the last few blocks, and playtesting. I haven't talked much about playtesting, but it's an important part of making levels like this. I can't just spend so much time on a level to release it with more bugs in a Bethesda game, as that would be a complete waste. To prevent that, I made a playtesting copy after finishing the last few blocks in mid-February, and I gave it to some friends through group chat. I mostly expected the playtesting to be gameplay focused, but they found a lot of visual bugs and even some menu issues I never could have found by myself. Like here, one playtester found that getting this collectible lets you clip out of the world since a block was accidentally on the wrong group, and another playtester found that an item was unobtainable because of how I fixed a separate bug. Speaking of which, I don't think I mentioned the collectibles yet. They're scattered through the level and give some important lore I couldn't show through just the level's environment. I won't show how to get them though, as that's part of the fun. What wasn't fun though, was making the levels menu where you could see these collectibles and change the settings. I thought it was fairly organized when I originally made it, but I had to revisit my triggers later thanks to a bunch of low detail mode bugs. This led to a lot of time spent on just bug fixing, like how I spent 4 hours trying to fix one bug thanks to one object. A single object that was accidentally marked as high detail gave me 4 hours of work. I don't want to talk about it. Moving on, I finally developed the level's ending more this time. I actually put the least thought into this at the start, where my original plan was having the storm lighten up before the atmosphere basically cracks open and reveals the space behind it. But after a bit of talking with my playtesters, I decided to invert it to actually end up in space first, then that kind of cracks and separates instead. I also had to relearn how to draw to make the end screen. It's meant to show Coralis, a character I made around the same time that I started the level, but I hadn't drawn him in ages so I had to relearn that. The level's events are based on his point of view, so he's kind of important in that regard. But once I was finished, I was basically done with everything. So before we look at the final product, what did I learn from all this? First, get a main idea for your levels before starting, and try to plan things out a bit. It'll get much faster with building after this initial investment, and it'll help you find ideas and inspiration as well. You don't need a 4000 word document like mine, but having some basic ideas laid out will save lots of time. Next, you'll have to make trade-offs all the time when you create. On a small scale, this can mean using more details in a block and sacrificing optimization. On a larger scale, I sacrificed lots of time making this level to make it as good as I could. Speaking of which, what makes a level good anyways? It's really just how you define it. For me, I think my levels are good if they accomplish the goals I set for myself, but it's not always that straightforward. After all, I had to scrap a bunch of goals to keep my level in a reasonable scope. When I deviated from this standard partway through building, it cost me hundreds of hours where I could have been more motivated and probably more efficient. But would I trade it for a different journey? Probably not. After all, I had a lot of fun making this level. No matter what I could have done better or faster, it's still a journey that changed how I view myself and my creations for the better. And ultimately, having fun should be your goal as a creator. You'll reach your goals with less regrets and be better off for it. The journey matters as much as the destination here. And on that note, I think it's time to show you the final product. After about 2,200 hours of work, I'm proud to present my best level, Anarchy Road.
Wait, but you're telling me I spent 2,300 hours on this level. And I didn't think of a good description at all that time. Oh my god.